character. That's the, the one of the main confusing settings. Now we open up this tab right here, animation settings. You code, so close that down, click on there, close it down. Animation mode is where you get to click. 2D is left and right. It's got a pretty cool uh, aesthetic to it. I do recommend using it. 3D is pretty much what I always like to use. It gives you way more options as far as zipping around and doing depth mapping and figuring out where you want to do. And video input, that's where instead of using an initial image, you use an initial video. So if you wanted to use a video instead of an image and have it uh, do disco diffusion frame by frame, instead of having it just do one frame and then go off on its own devices, it does its own devices to every single frame of your video. We're not going to do that in this tutorial, easier and if you understand 3d you understand the rest of so go ahead and set that to 3d the video input settings just don't worry about that this is your next thing it says 2d animation settings but it's all set x frames that's set to 10,000 go ahead and leave it you know you're never you're probably never going to get to 10,000 frames but if you do you know you know, leave it on there this is where things start to get into the actual nitty-gritty of your decisions on how you want to make your animations is what can describing this to you guys is not going to be Okay, um, if you're not super familiar with like how vectors work and you're not super familiar with like the X's of like X, Y, and Z, uh, X, Y, and Z for you European, Z for any non-Americans, I guess, us, Z, why would we call Z, Z when we could call Z, Z, you know, smarter. Point being, this is where the rubber meets the road. So if you understand X, Y, Z, then, you know, you maybe skip through this real quick because it's kind of confusing. So translation, that's that's left and right, up and down. It's like, so if you look at a piece of paper and you were to plot on the X axis, it is horizontal. You know, I always think of horizontal. They call fucking the horizontal mambo back in the day. That's how I remember it. Horizontal, you're laying flat, right? So horizontal, that's left, right. That's your X axis. Y, up, down. If you're going, if you're going Y, and you're going up, down. If you're going X, you're going left, right. So that is uh, usually with the 3D animation. I don't recommend it. You get a lot of smearing when you do the translation. So I usually use those fairly sparingly. And uh, although I've been getting more into it because I've been rolling back on Disco Diffusion 4.2, 4.1, whichever it is, and it gives it pretty cool. So play with it. This tutorial, we're not good. So just save yourself a little bit of headache. You can know that this is how the keyframes of Disco have. It has to be exact little naming convection convention and it has to go frame number is the, the frame that you are going. Then your colon, space, parentheses, speed in which the thing is gonna happen. Now this confused the living hell out of me. What is this number based off? Not much at all. There's no units, isn't degrees. This is just the amount of force that arbitrarily was set and then you're really gonna have to, put, so it pain in the butt. And so when I say that we've got the X transition, you know, we've got our left, right, we've got our Y transition, we got our north, south. So then if this is 2D, why is there a Z translation? That is forward. Z is your forward. Y is up, down, left, right. Z is your forward, backward, 3D space. So you might see that by auto, they're all set to zero, except for translation Z is set to 10. That is going to, from frame zero, you are going to be going 10 units fast forward. Uh, you can set that to negative and you'll pull backward. Almost every animation you see in Disco Diffusion is going forward and it's zipping around. You can get some pretty badass effects by throwing a minus in front of one of these numbers and instead of Z going forward, you do a minus and you Z backwards and you start pull out from your animation and then you could keyframe it to go back in. You do all sorts of crazy stuff. So what I would recommend, it has to be in this. So just go ahead and fall into this narrative. So you'll find these zeros, add a comma, space in, and now copy that. And don't just right click and get into the habit of control C to copy, control V. To, now you'll get, that's the correct frame, colon, parentheses, comma, and then so I throw a couple in there. And I won't do that here because I deal with the uh, XY, yada, yada. So if I go here, I throw a comma in and I paste some in. I don't like to start at necessarily. I think it's a little too hot. So I start at a five, zero, we're going five. So the next one will be frame 50. I don't want to go all the way to speed 10. I think too fast, so I go with speed eight. 
And now that's essentially, unless you want to alter it and you want to do different things, which again, for this tutorial, you can go ahead and just leave it like that, good to go. But once you come down here, this is where it's a little bit more confusing. So the way that you might think about it is like, uh, so if in 2D, horizontal, left and right, think that like maybe like if I rotated on the X, it's left and right, that means that so I would rotate, I would rotate, like no. The way that you got to think about this is like, think of you, if you mounted a camera to a bar. So there's a bar and your camera on the bar, right? And now this is X, right? If I'm going like this, this is Y, and this would be Z. If I'm going like this, this is the X, clamp a camera down to it, and, and I can't turn because I've clamped it, right? So that can't be the X axis because I can't move yet I can rotate my camera on this pole like that, and that's what, so if you think about mounting something that has no swivel, it only has the ability to just swivel on the smooth part, it can't go left and right, that's how you would think of rotation. An X, like this, that goes down and up. Y, actually you're left and right, that's how you do it. Z, that's your barrel roll. Think about it like that, Z, you're on there, it's your barrel roll, Y, that's your side to side, and X, that's your up and down. Confused the shit out of me, I came from the school of Blender, also Blender people. For some inexplicable reason, Blender decided to put the Z axis as north-south. That's not telemetry, any form or fashion, from airplanes to Maya to Unreal Engine, Everything you do, Disco Diffusion and on, Z is not north south. Y is up and down. That is your up and down axis for some reason in Blender Z is. So it confused the living hell out of me coming from Blender into this, where I had to completely figure out, it's like, oh, the Z axis is forward, not up. What the hell is going on, Blender? So that's your Z trend. So I don't love up and down of the Disco Diffusion, you know, like whatever you're going for, do it. I really like the side to sides, you know? So, because like Z, it's your, uh, you got your barrel roll and your Y, your side to side. So I really like to focus on uh, Y and uh, just go ahead and do that. And then I'll just copy and paste the 3DZ the exact same because it, it will do cool. So it's like not only my turning, but then I'm barrel roll turning. And you can change that and have them be whatever you want for the purpose of this tutorial. All right, so remember, throw a comment in there and then Go ahead and then put a space and now just control V, a bunch of those zeros in there. Now that you have that, set it to uh, zero equals zero and then set it this for this time because this, now you can understand exactly what's going on. So I will set it to 150. The next one I will set to 80. And the last one I will set to 210. So frames that this will be going at. Disco Diffusion, unless you change it, it runs at 12 frames per that 120 frames is 10 seconds. So that would be five seconds, 60 frames. So if we go from 50 up to 110, 50 frames, so that will be five seconds, the uh, the time. And so you can go and I would set it to like two or three. That's gonna give you a nice, if you go to five, uh, three or in this amount of frames, uh, three, four, maybe five, will get you almost a three six. Like, uh, 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 if you set it to three in about 60, frames, if you set it to 100 at three, that might be it. So that's why there's no, it's not like a set amount. I can't be like, oh, it's this amount of degrees. If you set it for this, it doesn't work like. So just remember that uh, 120 frames is 10 seconds. You don't want it zooming all over the place in 10 seconds. So don't set it to like 15 frames and then 50. Set it for 150, 200, start there. But once again, play around with it. And so we got our 150, our 180, our 210. And then we'll skip a bunch and we'll do a very similar thing and we'll go to like uh, 450, 80, and 510. And then maybe we'll do on this one, put many here. 450, 480, maybe we'll throw a negative three. So now it will be at 450 from 210 to 450, we'll be doing zero movement. And then this, we're gonna slowly start ramping up three degrees of however much arbitrarily that's set to. You're in three units of fastness for 30 frames you're gonna ramp up and you're gonna have that max speed. And then for the next 30 frames, you're going to ramp down until your back is zero and you're not moving at all. So right here, we're gonna be going perfectly straight. We got our Z transition. We're going straight after zero all the way up. And at zero, we're not translating at all. We're not rotating. At frame 150, start slowly going. By 180, we're gonna be going full speed and it's gonna slow down. So it's gonna be like boop and slow down. And then you're faced the direction you're facing. And now your Z translation is local space, not global. So your Z translation if you set it straight, you're not going to be going like diagonal as now I'm looking here and now I'm pivoting this whatever 
direction you're looking. That is your Z. It is local space. So essentially we can leave it right there. And But like I said, I like to do a little thing where I will copy and I'll throw and I will just paste in. So that's the way that we'll, instead of just turning, we're turning and rolling. I think it gives a, a, a cool, so as we go, going ahead, uh, the Midas, leave all this the same. I haven't had good luck uh, changing many of this. The far plane, near plane, once again, you can bump this up a little bit, maybe 500. You can bump this down a little bit, maybe 8,000. I haven't noticed on uh, field of view. That is what lens you are on. Standard to a 40 millimeter. That is 40 millimeter lens. I like to go a little bit higher. The less of the, if I got a 20 millimeter lens, I feel like the whole world has to render inside of this thing and you don't want to do that. So I said it's like something like an 80. Zoom in a little bit. Not a super, not super hella telephoto, but you know, enough to get in there. Uh,